Well, 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 this is everyone's favourite little demo, the rolling cylinders. There are two cylinders here, a solid cylinder and a hollow cylinder. And we're going to roll them down a slope, there's a slope there, into that sink. And the question is, which one will reach the bottom first, or will they reach the bottom at the same time? Both get the same mass, both get the same external radius. What do you think? Do you want to have a guess? Which one will reach the bottom first? Hollow one or the solid one? Have a guess. Are you ready? Will we try it? Here we go then. I'm holding them back with a wee ruler just now. We lift the ruler and let them go. Which one will reach the bottom first, if any? Let's go and... Solid cylinder. Will we do it again just to make sure? We'll put the cylinders on the other side this time. Here they are again. Ready? Solid cylinder. I'll almost do it three times. Be confident in our results. Here we go. Solid cylinder. Why? Does the solid cylinder reach the bottom first? Why does it take less time to roll down the slope? Why is it travelling faster at the bottom of the slope? Well, it's all to do with the moment of inertia of each of those cylinders. Now, you should already know that the moment of inertia of a solid disk is given by the mathematical relationship, a half mr squared and the moment of inertia of a hoop, because all its mass is concentrated at a single distance from its axis of rotation. The moment of inertia of a hoop is mr squared. Now, we could determine mathematically, theoretically, the moment of inertia of each of those shapes. In fact, we will. But you can also determine the moment of inertia experimentally from this very demonstration, from the time it takes for them to roll down the slope and the length of the slope, we can work out the speed that they're going at at the bottom of the slope and then using conservation of energy, potential energy changing to kinetic energy, we can determine the moment of inertia of these cylinders. When these cylinders roll down the slope, then they have gravitational potential energy at this point because it's at a certain height, vertical height, that gravitational potential energy will change into kinetic energy. But there's two types of kinetic energy to consider here. There is the translational kinetic energy as it rolls down the slope, but there's also its rotational kinetic energy. Now, the reason that the solid cylinder rolls down the slope faster is because it has more translational kinetic energy. It's got less rotational kinetic energy. And it's got less rotational kinetic energy because it's got a smaller moment of inertia. Now we can measure the moment of inertia of these two cylinders. We can do it theoretically or we can do it experimentally. And that's what we're going to do with this apparatus. We're going to determine the moment of inertia of each of these cylinders experimentally. Now if we do it theoretically, we are assuming that that has got a uniform density. We don't know if it's solid, though it might be hollow inside. We don't know. But if we do it experimentally, we can certainly check that. Similarly with this one, is all the mass concentrated at a fixed point, at a fixed distance from the axis of rotation? Hmm. We may need to investigate that. So, we only need to make three measurements to do this experiment. We need to measure the time it takes for the cylinders to roll down the slope. We need to measure the distance that they roll down the slope. And we need to know the mass of each of those cylinders. And that's really it, okay? We need to know the radius of the cylinders as well. Look the same. So, only three, four measurements really. Time to roll down the slope, length of slope, radius of the cylinders, and mass of the cylinders. And using that information, we can hopefully determine the moment of inertia. 
Now the only other measurement I'm going to make, apart from the length of the slope, which I have measured to 1.5 meters, from that line to the very bottom of the slope. The other measurement we need is we need the height of the slope to that point, and I measured that at 100 millimeters, 2.1 meters. Right, here's the plan then, hollow cylinders and solid cylinders. Firstly then, there's our theoretical relationships for determining the moment of inertia of the solid cylinder and the hollow cylinder. We're going to measure the mass of each cylinder, measure the radius of each cylinder, and calculate the moment of inertia of each cylinder. Bear in mind, these will be the theoretical values. Then we're going to do the experiment by rolling the cylinders down the slope, and by using conservation of energy, determine the moment of inertia of each cylinder. We're going to measure the vertical height of the slope, Measure the initial potential energy of the cylinders from EP equals MGH. We're going to measure the length of the slope and the time taken for each cylinder to roll down the slope. Then we're going to use our linear equations of motion and rotational equations of motion to determine experimentally the moment of inertia of each of the cylinders. And we're going to roll our cylinders down the slope then and measure how long it takes, do three times for each one. So here's the first one, solid cylinder. I'm counting it down. Three, two, one, go. And up. 2.59 seconds. Solid cylinder. Better reset that. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Up. 2.63 seconds. See that? Three, two, one, go. Stop. 2.65 seconds. See, again, this time it's with the hollow cylinder, so reset my stop clock. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Stop. 3.02 seconds. Here we go. Hollow cylinder. Three, two, one, go. Up. 3.04 seconds. So the hollow one is taking longer each time compared to the solid one. Here's the last one. Hollow cylinder. 1.5 meter slope, height of 0.1 meters, time to reach the bottom of the slope. 3, 2, 1, go. Up. 3.03 seconds. Right, so there's our results. We let the solid cylinder roll down the slope three times. There's our three times, and we worked out the mean of those three times. We've got 2.62 for the solid cylinder. Also worked out the random uncertainty in the mean. It was 0 0.02, so that's about 1%. Then we did the same with the hollow cylinder. We let it roll down the slope three times, measured it each time. Worked out the mean, it was 3.03. .03. Plus or minus 0 0.01, that's less than 1%. And remember, we let those cylinders go from a height, a vertical height, of 0 0.1 metres. We also measured the mass of the cylinders. They were 112 grams each, and the radius of each cylinder was 16 millimetres. And we're going to use the fact that, using conservation of energy, the potential energy of each cylinder at the top will be equal to the kinetic energy of each cylinder at the bottom. And remember, that kinetic energy will have two forms. There will be translational kinetic energy, which is moving in a straight line, and rotational kinetic energy. Translational kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Rotational kinetic energy, a half i omega squared. And using all those measurements we have made, and with a little bit of mathematical jiggery-pokery with this relationship, we should be able to work out I, the moment of inertia, of each cylinder. Let's do it on paper. So we measured the mass of each of the cylinders. They were both 112 grams, and we measured the radius as well. In fact, we measured the diameter. The diameter was 32 millimetres, so the radius will be half of that. We then worked out the moment of inertia of the solid cylinder, a half mr squared, 
and the moment of inertia of the hollow cylinder using I equals MR squared. And there's the values that we got for both. The solid cylinder has got a smaller moment of inertia than the hollow one. Remember, both those relationships are on your relationship sheet. There they're there. They're in the additional relationships at the back. So the solid cylinder has got a moment of inertia half that of the hollow cylinder. Now, if an object's got a combination of linear and rotational motion, for example, a car rolling along the road or our cylinders rolling down a slope, then they have a combination of translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. A half mv squared plus a half i omega squared. And using conservation of energy then, their cylinders will have gravitational potential energy, mgh, at the top of the slope, and then that will change into translational kinetic energy, a half mv squared plus rotational kinetic energy, a half i omega squared. And i is the moment of inertia of the cylinder, and omega is the angular velocity in radians per second of the cylinder. Now, we can do a little bit of manipulation with the relationship here. Because we know that omega equals v over r, so omega squared is v squared over r squared. And if we substitute in for our omega squared with v squared over r squared, and divide both sides of our initial relationship by m, then we're going to end up with a new arrangement on the second line there. Now, taking v squared out on the right-hand side as a common factor, gives us the third line, and divide both sides by v squared, that gives us the fourth line. Subtract one from each side, gives us the penultimate line, and then rearrange for i on its own. And there's our expression for i, the moment of inertia, of the solid cylinder or the hollow cylinder. And we have all the values to put in there. We've got M, we've got R, we've got G, H, and, well, we would need to determine V, the final velocity at the bottom of the slope. And for that, we can use our higher physics linear equations of motion. So let's do that for each of our cylinders. So V is the velocity at the bottom of the slope. And we know the displacement the time to roll down the slope, and the initial velocity. So we're going to use S equals U plus V over 2 times T, which is just really distance equals average speed times time. And for the solid cylinder, our mean time was 2.62. The distance of the slope was 1.5 meters. So there's our final velocity there. So if we rearrange that relationship to work out the final velocity of the solid cylinder at the bottom of the slope. It's going to be 2 times 1.5 divided by 2.62 gives us 1.14 meters per second. If we then substitute that final velocity at the bottom of the slope into our relationship for the moment of inertia, so the 1.14 gets substituted in for V, and then you do that on your calculator, the moment of inertia of the solid cylinder is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5 kilogram meter squared. And let's do the same thing for the hollow cylinder. We'll use our linear equation of motion again to work out the final velocity of the cylinder at the bottom of the slope. Well, the mean time was 3.03 .03 seconds. So we substitute that in for the time, work out V, so V will be 2 times 1.5 over 3.03 .03 is 0.99 meters per second. And if that's the speed at the bottom of the slope, we substitute that in for V in the moment of inertia relationship. And then if you do all of that on your calculator, you get an answer of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 5 kilogram meters squared. That's our experimental values. Let's compare our experimental values with the theoretical values that we got by using the relationships on our relationship sheet. So the solid cylinder, our theoretical value, which we calculated by using I 
equals a half m r squared, that's the relationship that's on your relationship sheet. It gave us a value of 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5, and when we did the experiment, our experimental value was 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5, same answer. Similarly with the hollow cylinder, the theoretical value using the relationship m r squared gave us an answer of 2.9 times 10 to the minus 5 kilogram meter squared, and our experimental value, 2.9 times 10 to the minus 5 kilogram meter squared. So our experimental values agree with our theoretical values then. The solid cylinder has a smaller moment of inertia than the uh, hollow cylinder, and therefore it will have a smaller rotational kinetic energy, and therefore it will have a greater translational kinetic energy, and that's why it will always reach the bottom of the slope first. That's rolling cylinders. That's it. See you in the next one.